When I first saw Pablo Picasso's Deux Femmes Courant sur la Plage, or two women running on the beach at the Museum of Modern Art, I thought it was wonderful, with those massive bodies and swift, ecstatic motion. I felt also there was great respect. I didn't know wholly why, and I'm grateful to study Picasso's painting of 1922 and see why it affected me and has affected people for over 90 years. Some autobiography, two ways of pleasure. When I turned 18 and left home for college, I took the opportunity to be free and to have pleasure in ways I'd never experienced. I saw myself as now being able to do what I pleased. I also wanted to be serious, to study. But I didn't feel that the pleasure of kicking up my heels was at all related to the pleasure I had when I was seriously studying. And by the time I was 21, I wrote in my journal, I'm all bluff and no substance. I'm all potential and no reward. I'm all grand talk and no grand reality. All fluffy frosting and no cake. Reading these words now and knowing how I've changed makes me grateful to aesthetic realism and Eli Siegel. The girl who saw herself as having no substance loved Picasso's women who were so substantial. But I could have loved them and never known why, and never known how to feel that I had the substance they had, even as they were so abandoned, until I began to study aesthetic realism. I learned the principles which changed my life, to see the difference between the pleasure of contempt that made me despise myself, and the greater honest pleasure based on respect for the world which art represents. I learned that the pleasure of kicking up my heels and the pleasure of reading were honest if I liked the world more, and both would be dishonest if they were used to make less of the world, which is contempt. The pleasure of contempt is dishonest because it is a way of separating ourselves from the world, and it's not true to the deepest hope of self. What I really wanted was what Mr. Siegel describes in his essay, The Nature of Pleasure, quote, The largest pleasure or the truest happiness of a human being would be his becoming definitely, intensely, what he is by being intensely, variously, deeply unified with the world, unquote. What makes such unity with the world possible is the fact that both beauty and ourselves are made of the same opposites, such as sameness and difference, rest and motion, weight and lightness. Picasso shows this technically in his two women running on the beach. Two, how the opposites make us unified with the world. I think I love this painting because it has a great, joyous like of the world. Why? First, it's because through form and color, Picasso relates the women to the land and water and sky, even as they are different. Second, it is in how reality's opposites are in the figures of the women themselves. How does Picasso show the two women are like the world? See how the outstretched horizontal arm of the running figure in front is like the horizon behind her. We feel in the straight line of her arm something ever so abandoned is yet following the direction of the world itself. And look where her heel kicks up behind on that very same horizontal line. Their hair floats behind them too in a horizontal line. Stability is at one with abandon. Abstract form and personal direction are together. Everywhere, we feel both flatness and roundness, something abstract and something substantial, concrete, connecting the two women in the world. See how the waving hair of the girl on the left joins the cloud right next to and above it? See how two feet follow a direction in the earth and two lift up, surrounded by blue space. Each woman has one foot on the ground and one in space. 
they're not just kicking up their heels then and saying goodbye world. They're connected to the world as airy and light, but also as weighty through the ground. Color makes for relation too. The shadows of their robes are the same grays as the shadows in the ground. It is through these connections, the oneness of opposites which Picasso felt and painted, that they are free and we, looking at them, feel freer ourselves. Behind and to the front of the first woman is what looks like a little rise of land. Picasso paints them as not just skimming over a plain, but also as impeded by the land. Surprisingly, if you cover up that rise, you feel something too fixed. Pleasure that's not honest tries to smooth over impediment. We try to run over other people's feelings. We even try to dismiss our own feelings, like guilt or self-doubt, thinking they'll be in the way. How many times I said in my life, and people say, I know I won't feel good about this, but I want to do it, and I'm going to do it anyway. Women spend so much time trying to free ourselves from our questions we don't realize we should welcome them. Maybe, says Picasso, they won't slow you down truly. It is the awareness of impediment I learned that can have us feel we're honestly freer. Three, heaviness and lightness are made one. In his essay, Is Beauty the Making One of Opposites? Eli Siegel asks about the opposites of heaviness and lightness, quote, is there in all art, and quite clearly in sculpture, the presence of what makes for lightness, release, gaiety? And is there the presence, too, of what makes for stability, solidity, seriousness? Is the state of mind making for art both heavier and lighter than that which is customary?" Unquote. Lightness and release seem to be the very subject of the painting. But there is the presence, too, of such solidity, such weight. Martin Friedman, in his book Picasso, writes, quote, In joyful abandon, these ponderous, chitin-draped nymphs are in a state of near ecstasy, unquote. But how is it that the ponderous can be at one with the ecstatic, that what is so heavy can be made so light? It is in the fact of relation. The women are so of the earth they are in it, and at the same moment they run along it and rise from it, connecting earth and sky. What aesthetic realism has taught is that the only way to like the world is by seeing opposites as one. Mr. Siegel said in an aesthetic realism class, some girls are very serious but can pretend they aren't and accuse friends of being too serious. Do you want to act more cheerful than others? I replied, yes. And he said, get a sign that reads, we are all serious and we also all like the lightness of things. I had separated opposites and Mr. Siegel was encouraging me to see them as together. How aesthetic realism sees people is based on this great principle. All beauty is a making one of opposites, and the making one of opposites is what we are going after in ourselves. Picasso has technical ways of joining lightness and heaviness. Look at his brush strokes. They're energetic and speedy, but they're put on deliberately. This speed with certainty makes the weighty substance light. Also, the technique of crosshatching Thin lines which crisscross, modeling the giant limbs, makes those limbs both more three-dimensional and, at the same time, lighter. 4. Large and small, world and woman. Finally, there's the size of the painting. It is astounding that this painting, which is oil on masonite, is only 13 and 3 eighths inches by 16 and 3 quarters inches a good deal smaller than the image we see here. Picasso has made small and large interplay and mingle in such a way 
that we feel a person is as large as the world and the world is within that person. The limbs of the women are mighty. In fact, one girl goes from one end of the painting to the other. Her right shoulder rises like a mighty tree trunk. Her left arm is like the horizon. Her features are not clearly defined. She represents something more than herself, the impersonal direction and substance of the earth. Finally, their hands are joined at the top of the painting. You feel the victory and joy a person has when self and world really become one. Aesthetic realism says this is our deepest purpose and what art shows us we want.